Welcome to this video by Home Audio Fidelity. We are providing a unique service combining acoustic crosstalk reduction together with loudspeakers and room correction. The purpose of this video is to give more insight into acoustic crosstalk and to demonstrate why it's important to reduce it for an accurate stereo reproduction. The human auditory system is complex and we will only focus on important features related to crosstalk. One obvious one is that we have two ears. This feature is crucial for sound source localization. The differences between the sound waves reaching each ear are processed by our brain to determine the source position. In a simplified approach, the sound pressure difference between ears can be expressed by a delay. This delay comes from the path length's difference between the source and each ear. On top of this, our head and torso are like a sound barrier that lowers the sound at the opposite ear. This effect is visible in the frequency domain where the shadowing is more effective at high frequencies and when the sound wavelength falls below the head dimensions. The time and frequency differences between each ear change with source direction and personal anatomy. The set of functions describing this dependency is called HRTF, head-related transfer functions. You can see an example in the time and frequency domain for a sound source located to the right side. It is important to keep in mind that HRTF can change significantly between individuals as head and ear shapes have a major influence. The anatomy influence is clearly visible on these graphs presenting the interoral differences for a set of individuals. This is an illustration of the left to right ear's differences for a standard stereo listening setup. This variability is both visible in the frequency domain, top graph, and time domain, bottom one. Considering the binaural nature of our auditory system, an almost perfect reproduction chain would require a two microphone recording system. This system should take head and ears shadowing effect into consideration, like a pair of in-ear microphones. The associated playback system should ideally be placed at the ear entrances. This would not be practical and not generic, as each individual has a different anatomy. Stereophony is a much more practical but imperfect system, using differences between two sources to create a soundscape illusion. The source signals can come either from a couple of microphones with specific spacing, or from a monaural source artificially converted into a pair of signals with level and phase differences. Stereo reproduction with headphones prevents any cross-feeding between the channels, and it doesn't sound natural. On the other end, reproduction with loudspeakers is far from the ideal binaural reproduction chain. As visible in the illustration, it has permanent cross-feeding between the left and right channels. This is what we call acoustic crosstalk. While this effect is not so critical for the low frequency range, it causes some issues for the rest of the spectrum. The first issue is related to spatial cues encoded by the left to right channel's differences. These cues are corrupted by the addition of the unwanted path coming from the opposite loudspeaker. As you will hear in the following audio extract, the presence of crosstalk reduces the three-dimensional soundstage and gives out something that sounds more flat. This is why with standard stereo reproduction, the auditor feels the soundstage in front of him rather than being enveloped by the sound. The second major drawback of crosstalk is related to tonal coloration. This effect is easier to understand using the centered voice example. To set a voice right in front of the listener, the same signal has to be played by the two loudspeakers. Taking crosstalk into consideration, each ear will get the intended signal plus a delayed version of it coming from the opposite loudspeaker. Adding to a signal, a delayed version of it gives off comb filtering effects which are visible as a series of notches in the frequency domain. 
This reduces the intelligibility of voices and adds some harshness. This is why a 5.1 audio system has a dedicated central channel for improving a dialogue's intelligibility. The following example demonstrates this harshness effect and the benefit of crosstalk reduction. Thanks to digital processing, it is possible to reduce crosstalk by applying filters up front to loudspeakers. Home Audio Fidelity has developed specific algorithms to generate those filters. Our solution gives off filters with good robustness to head movements and that do not create tonal coloration outside the sweet spot. The second advantage of our solution is that crosstalk reduction filters are combined with loudspeakers and room correction. With this combination, you can reach the highest level of realism from your audio system. As we have seen at the beginning of this video, the way sound waves are reaching each ear is described by functions depending on source location and personal anatomy. The same apply to the stereo crosstalk description and the correction filters definition. The more precise we characterize crosstalk, the better the correction will be. This is why we propose different options. The standard one is based on a generic head model and on the geometrical description of the listening configuration. A more advanced model requires head dimensions as input data to replace the generic head model. The most precise option requires measurement of your personal head transfer functions using in-ear binaural microphones. Thanks for your attention. Visit us at homeaudiofidelity.com where you can try our solution for free.